Hey Will, we're here at Tile Yard at the Gearfest and, uh, well, Teenage Engineering here. Yeah. Uh, and there's some new firmware updates already for the TX6, right? Yeah, so we've actually added a whole bunch of things that people asked for, some things that people didn't know they even needed, um, some really exciting features and, and fixes. Um, so to start, obviously the biggest feature is recording straight to USB mass storage. Um, so you can plug in a USB stick, a hard drive, and just record two channel WAVs, 24-bit, um, straight to the USB stick. Sounds really good, and it's really simple, and you can store as much as your USB stick can hold. Right, so that's just like a, a USB, well, whatever that is. It's, yeah, just a, yeah, it's just a, a pretty plain old USB stick. It's a SanDisk one, if anyone was wondering. Uh, hot, hot swappable as well, by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, so you just plug it in, it detects the drive, so there's a little glyph there that says, I can see a drive. Um, and then you just go into the menu, down to disk, and then you've got a couple of little controls to record onto it. Super simple, um, but it allows you to record whatever you're playing through the TX6 with effects and, and whatever you need. Um, let me talk you through some of the, uh, the changes. Okay. So, We've now got CC control, so MIDI CC control of every single parameter in the TX6. So if you want to have an external controller, you know, connect it to Ableton, for example, and have it automate parameter changes, you can have it do that. Um, or you can have you know, like a launch control, plug that straight in, assign the controls. Um, it's really nice and simple, and it reflects through the interface as you're changing those parameters. Um, we've made it so that the output jacks on here are switchable, so you can switch the aux to the headphone jack, which is um, lower output, uh, so you can have a higher output for higher impedance headphones. So send that through the aux jack, which gets two volts RMS instead of the lower output right. impedance. So you could use high high res uh, headphones. Uh, apologies for that. <laughs> yeah, you can you can use kind of higher impedance headphones or, or whatever outputs do, you need. Do, the, you said MIDI, do any of these controls actually transmit MIDI CC as well? Do yeah, you? yeah, absolutely. So since day one, it's been a, a like a MIDI controller. So I've seen some really interesting stuff um, kind of crop up from forums and online where people have used it to control, you know, like AR experiences through their phone. So holding the TX6 and having it change uh, interactive visuals, um, have it change stuff on, uh, on you know, their, their music tracks, do stuff live. Um, it's a really solid MIDI controller. Uh, and it fits uh, in your hand. It's so. I mean, it's such a controversial unit, isn't it? I mean, yeah. both the new OP1 and the TX6. I mean, people kind yeah. of almost begrudge the fact that it, it costs money to, to yeah. do. But the, we we saw the book at yeah. uh, Superboo, which yeah. was a, a lot of these components that, that you made them yourselves to suit the. I mean, it's a yeah. ground up kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, every single mechanical component in the TX6 is custom engineered. So. Each knob, potentiometer, uh, slider, button, even the jacks, all of them we had to engineer from scratch because we wanted it to feel amazing and have the right resistance and, and the right size and the right feel and you know, just uh, have control over every single aspect of it so that it was as good as it can be. Because you know, off-the-shelf components are great, but you know, we really wanted to make it the best yeah. in its size. Um, so yeah, it, it's... The price is justified from that perspective, but also we're going to be updating it for years. I mean, we've already got hundreds of features in the pipeline, you know, for both the OP1 field and the TX6. We've got loads of ideas. Do you, um, th do you think that there's a, it's likely that we might get more than stereo record to disc at some point? I mean, I, I haven't spoken with the developers about it, so I can't say. Um, That's unfair I think, of me to ask you. Yeah, yeah, I? but but I think it, anything's on the table, and we've got some really amazing engineers. Um, so I'm sure they're trying. <laughs> I'm certain that there's a conversation that they're having at the moment about it. But, um, you know, we've got loads of ideas and stuff like new effects and, and that sort of thing. Anything's possible with the TX6. And we're constantly listening to feedback through forums, through our support channels. Um, so we've had people feedback and go, oh, I wanted to work with my MPC Live as an interface. And... You know, we've added the possibility to do that. We've changed it in this new firmware so that you can switch between 44.1 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz. So now it's pretty much fully class compliant. You can connect it to you know, Ableton, Logic, MPC Live, any sort of device that takes USB audio. Anything class compliant, right. And it just works. Um, so it's really, really nice. And it switches, so 
for those instances where you can use, for, uh, can use 48, it will switch to 48. And if it needs 44.1, it'll use 44.1. So those sorts of things, kind of little changes that make a big difference for our users, we've added. And we've also put in a balanced uh, input mode. So when you plug in a jack, it's now mono, stereo, split, and balanced. So for microphones. Um, ah, OK. Will it do, dyna will it do uh, phantom as well? So it doesn't have the ability to do phantom power. But there is kind of workarounds to get phantom power mics working. Is the firmware available now? Is it Yeah, public? the firmware is available right now. It's 1.1.4, I believe. And you can find it at teenageengineering.com slash downloads, I believe. Um, yeah, free. So go download it. Update your, update your TX6. Thanks very much.